Yeah, in this video I'll be going through the three options for cutting gears uh, at home on your, or on your home lathe or your mill even um, and we'll go from the simplest which is your fly cutter through to the uh, more expensive ones but overall they're all quite cheap to, to, to use and set up and use so that's your basic fly cutter it's just a piece of round steel machined up to go into your collet um, I use, the, uh, I use the ER32 system in my uh, lathe, but any of the ERs will do. The, a good, it's a good collet system. So basically, yeah, that's your fly cutter. Uh, hole through there, high speed steel cutter. In she goes. Lock her up. You're, you're good to go. The cutter is just a piece of high speed um, steel. Uh, probably, I don't know, four dollars for that. And. Uh, you shape the end of it to the profile of the tooth, tooth space that you basically wanted to cut. You give it some back relief, make sure, give it some clearance. And also on the end you'll see it tapers in from top to bottom, which gives it some clearance, uh, so it will clear itself when it's cutting. That's your most basic type of cutter. The downside is it's slow because it's only cutting once per revolution. It also tends to uh, give you some vibration because it's an irregular cut and you'll always get vibration with an irregular cut. It's a bit like having a saw with a circular saw with only one tooth on it, but it does the job. It's great for aluminium, copper, brass, anything like that. You get into cast iron, it'll do it, but it'll get a lot of shock loading, so not really recommended for small lays. On a bigger lay, mm, not so bad. Second option is a hob, a gear hob. Now here's one I made up. That's made up of some high carbon steel. These do a good job if you get them right, but that's the tricky bit. You've got to get the, you've got to get the tooth spacing right. Uh, there's a lot of articles on the web about gear hobbing. You can easily read up on it. I've tried it, played around with it. Mm, it's okay. It can do nice gears. Um, the downside, the big downside, is you get a lot of vibration with this because it's doing three cuts at once, multiple teeth, so it puts a big load on the lathe. <coughs> If it's a small lathe, you're really going to notice that a big lathe, not so bad probably. That's my least favourite option, so I basically would steer clear of that myself. Others will disagree, but that's up to them. The third option, and your best option in my opinion, once you get a little bit of experience up, uh, and you've tried your fly cutter, which is a good way to start, it's the way most people would start, and I'd recommend you start off with that. Then move on to involute gear cutters, because these are cheap to buy, and they're extremely good. Um, you've got multiple cutting teeth, as you can see. Um, these put the least amount of stress and vibration and load on a lathe. Uh, they cut faster, they cut more quietly, and for a small lathe, these are very good. To buy that off the internet, about ten dollars. Then a bit of postage from Hong Kong or China, which is where you want to buy them. The high-speed steel, they're excellent quality. You get by with just two, really, two or three at the most, because these, each of these will do a range of um, gear sizes. Uh, this is number seven, and this is a number five. Um, number seven, I think, does a range of teeth from 55 to 130 odd, and the number five does a range from about 26 to 34, I think, from memory. So yeah, you can get a bar with two probably, and three at the most, and do just about every gear on your on your lathe. To make the uh, arbor up is pretty easy. It's just a piece of straight steel and uh, steel rod. You just machine it up. It's got an end cap. It's just threaded down the middle. It's got a. Uh, I've made it this way with a, a, a spacer to give it more length in the keyway. Otherwise, you can have a very short key. So this is just basically a spacer, but it makes the whole thing more robust. The only tricky part about making this, you have to mill a slot for a keyway, but as you're going to be cutting gears on a lathe anyway, and you can have a mill slide, you can easily do, the, do a, 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 a keyway with your, with your milling um, bit and uh, just get an end mill and put it in your collet and away you go. Um, if you don't want to do that, you can actually get by by not having a keyway uh, you can use a roll pin instead to engage with the slot in the uh, in the actual um, involute gear cutter. Uh, I mean, that's a cheat, cheating way of doing it, I suppose, but you can do it. You could use a roll pin in there. 
or you can use a solid pin but I mean of course a, a, the best way to do it is a, is a key and it, it's not hard to make that up so that just goes on like so put on your spacer and then your end cap goes on you notice the end cap's also got a relief all the thrust is on the outside edge of it and that way when it pulls up it will self center and screw her up and you're good to go so this is the preferred option in my opinion um, also when you make these try and keep the overhang on the end as short as possible so that you give yourself a bit of clearance because it's coming in into that right angle bracket you've got um, and all your cutters you want to try and keep them as short as possible you could make that shorter anyway that's quite okay for what I've been using um, so there you go there's your three options um, preferred number one number two least preferred but start off with this one um, and you'll find it will do everything that this will do but it will do it slower um, but it can be just as accurate there's no reason why it can't be just as accurate because if you've cut that uh, profile on the on the end of that cutter right it'll be as good as that there you go something to think about and uh, good luck with your gear cutting See you next time.